They say do not meet your heroes, because they are never what we think they are. Well, that was indeed the risk with this book. Daniel Lear lent it to me in high school. As a kid, I read this book in record time. I loved it from the first line of page one. I have looked for this book for many years and finally got my hands on a copy. But with that came some fear. My memories of it are great. Now how will my older self find it? Is it a polished gem of fantasy lit, or a fueled nut job that sits drunk in the corner but looks fabulous doing it? So this was a little unique as it was written by a pair of artists, the Hildebrandt brothers. During the 70s and 80s, their paintings came up all over the place, and anyone into D&D probably would have been familiar with their work. They did book covers, comics, movie posters, including Star Wars. The original idea was to make Ursharak as a movie, but this fell through, so instead they made it as an illustrated novel. It's a mixed bag for sure, and from a movie point of view, even more so. It would not have held up to the movies today, but in its day, it might have been ahead of many of the other fantasy movies that were being produced. The base storyline is not really new, even for then. A massive power has been around for a long time, waiting for the right time to strike, and they live in a tower in dark lands. Basically Sauron. That time is now and his armies are on the move. They clash against the Allies' fortress, a bit like Helm's Deep. A small group is trying to get somewhere and not get caught, a bit like a fellowship. And there is a prophecy. It's all pretty standard stuff. It has a mix of races, which was cool. I do think some of the other characters are more interesting than our human ranger hero. His family dead at the hands of marauding beasts and he is set upon their trail. He is a ranger and has little trouble tracking them and little personality to get in the way. Which is the problem with this kind of protagonist. He is grief-stricken and fueled only by revenge. He is reluctant to do anything that does not lead towards that goal and exclusively that goal. Now it makes perfect sense for him to be that way, but it makes it harder to be invested in him as a character. He does change over the course of the novel, which is cool and well. He had to, as it would have been a bit of a slog if he was going to be how he was for 300 pages. The action is pretty decent, there is a fair amount of it. I think that will appeal more to the 12 year olds in us, as from there it does get a little weak. The story is pretty damn close to Lord of the Rings. It just doesn't stand out. Which is a pity, as I think if it had become a series of books, it would have drifted away from its more familiar roots and moved into something a bit new and different. All of the characters are a little weak in terms of depth. That being said, the girls are not badly written, especially considering when this book was done. None of them are damsels in distress, and all are important in their own sections. The world is okay. In this book it is a Middle-earth clone, but I think it would have loosened as time went on. There were unexplored places, races, and a general sense of scope in the setting that we couldn't get in just one book. Time is what they needed. The book is worth tracking down for two reasons, though. The first, and probably the most important, is the art. If you are a fan of their work, then this book is a dream. There isn't one or two prints. There are a lot of colour plates showing the world as well as black and white images. I think a lot of these might have been done for the movie concept art, but even so, to have them in the book is a novelty that so many do not include. They are elaborate, colourful, and full of passion. For that alone, it's worth picking up. The other reason is it's a D&D &D adventure. It is exactly the type of adventure 12-year-olds playing D&D &D were hoping for. It had a quest, a need for heroes, battles, travel, exploration, and for a young group of D&D &D players, that tale would have been a grand adventure. I think it was that which appealed to me when I first read this book. So while this book isn't the pinnacle of fantasy lit, it can still be a light, enjoyable fantasy read. And it is still an interesting book to have a copy of sitting on your shelf even if it's just to pull down and enjoy the art every now and again. 